Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology. And in this context, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the uh, history of the development of the uh, field of the enzymology. And then subsequent to that, we have also discussed about the nomenclature classifications and in this particular couple of modules, we are discussing about how you can be able to produce the enzyme in the bulk quantities. And in this context, uh, we have discussed about the cloning of the enzyme into the, we have, we have discussed about the cloning of the enzyme uh, into a suitable vector. And uh, subsequent to that, we have also discussed about how you can be able to deliver this, D, this particular clone uh, into the suitable host. And in the current mo module, we are discussing about how you can be able to produce the enzyme by the overexpression. And for the overexpression, we have said that we are, uh, you know, we have a couple of choices of the host what we can use for the uh, particular vector. And uh, we can have the bacterial expression system, we can have the mammalian expression system, we can have yeast expression system, and we can also have the yeast expression system. So in the current uh, module, we are discussing about these host strains and how you can be able to produce the enzyme in the bulk quantities. So this is what we have discussed so far. We have discussed about how you can be able to isolate the enzyme or the gene, which is coding for the enzyme either by the uh, screening the genomic or the cdn library or with the help of the pcr and once you have the gene you can actually be able to digest this gene with the restriction enzyme and that's how you are going to have the sticky ends same you have to do for the vector and you have to have the sticky vectors and then when you put them together you are going to have the uh, you know the ligated uh, plasmids and that ligated plasmid you are going to deliver to the host of your choice and uh, depending on the different types of requirement, uh, you can actually be able to choose the host. Either it could be a bacterial expression host or the eukaryotic expression host. So uh, in the previous uh, lecture, we have discussed about the E. coli FA expression system. We have discussed about how you can be able to E. coli uh, for transformations, screening, and how you can be able to uh, observe the or monitor the overexpression with the help of the SDS page. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss more about the yeast as an expression system. So when we talk about the yeast as an expression system, the yeast is the simplest unicellular eukaryotic cell available for the protein production. So uh, the manipulations uh, in, in case of the yeast are very simple because they are behaving just like a bacteria because they are unicellular but they have the eukaryotic uh, cell like features and it is easy it is easy to manipulate and the production cost is very low in comparison to the other eukaryotic system right remember that when we were discussing about the uh, gene delivery we said that it is going to you, you can be able to use the multiple chemical methods and as well as the other kinds of methods to deliver the gene of your interest into the yeast cells it offers most of the advantage available in the typical eukaryotic cell, right? So it has a eukaryotic machinery, it has the nucleus, it has the, all other organelles that are present in the eukaryotic system. And in addition, and it also can be able to provide you the glycosylation of the protein, so it also be a added feature. 
So, in addition, a large number of genetic molecular biology and cell biology aspect of the yeast is known and this knowledge has helped us to design the better protein production strategy and troubleshooting. Uh, in as far as the choice of the host, yeast host, you can have the non-methylotropic host or the methylotropic host. So, non-methylotropic host, these species do not have the ability to utilize one carbon compound such as the methanol but in it can be able to utilize the other carbon sources such as glucose, galactose, maltose, starch and alkanes. The examples of the yeast in these classes are S. cerevisiae, uh, K. lactis and the bilipotica. These yeast strains are mostly being used for the fermentation to produce the alcohol. The major advantage of this class is better understanding of the molecular biology, biochemistry and the fermentation technology aspects of these chain. But still the technology is not evolved to utilize this class of yeast for the production of heterogeneous proteins. So these are the non-methylonotropic uh, yeast which are mainly being used for the uh, uh, fermentation. And uh, the classical example is S. cerevisiae, which is being used for the fermentation to produce the alcohol. Then you have the methylotropic yeast. So the major advantage of this class is, is that its ability to utilize one carbon compound such as methanol and the energy sources. Uh, in addition, these strains have the high level of methanol oxidizing enzyme and that allow them to be very strong and grow in very high density. The examples of yeast in this class are Pichia pectoris, Pichia angusta, uh, Pichia methanolica and the C. bodini. So these are the, some of the strains which can be used for the enzyme production because they can be utilize the methanol and uh, they can use the when they, when they utilize the uh, methanol uh, as a carbon source, they also have the downstream promoters and other kinds of uh, machinery and that's how they can be able to get induced. Uh, as far as the transformation is concerned, you can be able to use the lithium acetate and electroporation are the method which are popular for the transformation of the yeast. And the vectors, uh, you can actually be able to use the different types of vectors what you are going to use uh, and they can be selected based on the uh, some of the oxytrophic markers. So you can use the, you know, and the antibiotic resistance such as G48 or hygromycins. Uh, then the promoters, so promoters in the yeast expression vector, so similar to E. coli expression system, yeast vector also have the different promoters to derive the expression of the foreign proteins. In general, the uh, yeast expression vector offer two types of promoters. You can have the constitutive promoters or the inducible promoters. So constitutive promoters are the promoters which are, you know, constitutively going to express the protein of your interest and that is going to be linked to the growth of the yeast. So these promoters belong to the housekeeping gene and as a result the expression is non-inducible. The protein production starts with the growth of the yeast and as a result it is proportional to the cell mass. Examples of these promoters are GABDPH and GAM1. And uh, then you have the inducible promoters. So Pichia pectoris expresses two different types of alcohol oxidase, AOX1 and AOX2. Whereas the Pichia augusta expresses the methanol oxidase or the MOX. The promoters of the OX1 and the MOX are presented on the yeast vector and it has been used to drive the expression of the foreign protein. The protein production is controlled by a balance of repression and induction. The presence of the other carbon source such as the glucose represses the transcription of OX gene but in the presence of trace amount of methanol, it induces the OX1 promoter mediated protein production. So in the inducible promoter, you can have the multiple choices. Either you can use the OX1 and OX2 promoters or you can use the MOX promoters. So these are the tables where I have given you uh, the uh, species and uh, whether they are using the constitutive promoters or the inducible promoters. And uh, in the non methanolotropic uh, strains, you can have the S. cerevisiae, K. leptis, bilipotica, and all that. And that is going to use an array of the constitutive promoter and as well as the inducible promoter. 
as far as the methanotropic stains, you can have the Pikia factoris uh, and the Pikia methanolica, and it is going to use the gap or the induced gap promoters, right? Gap PPH promoter or the inducible promoter. You can use the OX1, FLD1, MOX, and AUG2, AUG1. So uh, these are the some of the promoters what you can easily use and the different strains. So depending on the combinations, you can be able to define uh, de device and strategies to uh, promote or uh, to produce a protein in the uh, yeast expression system. The in production of the protein in the yeast, the protein production in the yeast can be done in such a way that either the protein is present in the cytosol or secreted into the media in the supernatant. Cytosolic targeted protein, this means these proteins are going to be expressed inside the uh, yeast cells. The expression of the protein targeted to the cytoplasm is very high, but the recovery is very difficult. The yeast cell wall is very hard and high pressure homogenization is used to disrupt the cell wall. The recovery is very less and a fraction of total protein comes out. So if you are going to put the protein into the cytosolic targeted protein, it is going to be very high, but the recovery is very low because the yeast has the cellulosic cell wall and it is very difficult to break. Then you can have the secreted protein. So protein ta tagged with the secretory signal such as SRVC, alpha mating factor signal target the pro signal protein into the secretory pathway. The signal peptide is processed in the ER Golgi vesicular transport system and appears in the culture media. It is difficult to say which pathway will be useful for our expression of the protein in yeast expression system because both of these pathways have their own uh, negative and positive because in the cellular targeting system uh, the recovery is going to be low whereas in the secreted proteins uh, because the protein is going to be present in the media it will not have any kind of protection so it will actually going to be get degraded by the some of the uh, proteases and other kinds of things and it is also going to exp you know uh, experience the environmental uh, changes for example if there will be change in the ph of the media that change in the pH is going to affect the quality of the protein what you are going to put into the secretory pathway. Irrespective of the, um, the pathway or you, you are going to use, you can actually be able to follow a couple of steps to uh, overexpress the protein in the yeast. Uh, so irrespective of the pathway, you can actually be able to choose, you can be able to express the protein in the multiple step method. For example, in the step one, you are going to transform you are going to transfer the transformed yeast into a 5 ml media with a suitable selection marker and incubate for two days at 28 degrees Celsius for shaking it. So in the step one, you are going to transfer, uh, you know, the transformed yeast into a suitable media. And then you put it for the shaking at 28 degrees Celsius for two days. And that is actually going to give you the good cell mass. So you, you in the step two, you allow the culture to reach at the OD600 at 5 to 7 and now the resuspend the cells in a new media without carbon source. Okay, So in this case, uh, first you are going to grow, uh, if you are going to inoculate the cells into the uh, into a media, right? let them grow for uh, two days into at uh, uh, 28 degrees Celsius and 180 RPM and once the OD is going to be at 5 to 7, then you can actually be able to transfer this into a fresh media and that is going to be the step 2. And then the step 3, you are going to induce the culture with a methanol of 1% uh, twice daily. So you, you have to be very careful at this stage because when you add the methanol, methanol, methanol is very toxic. So you have, might have to do a calibration curve before you actually going to induce the cells with the 1% methanol. So uh, you can actually be able to induce the cells with methanol, 1% uh, methanol with volume by volume twice daily. Okay. So uh, then in the step four, you're going to harvest the cells and analyze the expression on the SDS page. So you're going to centrifuge the cells that will give you the cell pellet and that cell pellet you can actually be able to break open and that's how you're going to express the uh, expression of these protein into the SDS page. Uh, so this is all about the protein production in the yeast expression system. And now let's move on to the next system and the next system is the insect cell line as an expression system. 
So in the insect cell line as an expression system, uh, as a eukaryotic buccal expression system of our protein modifications, right? Processing and transport system. Compared to the yeast, the downstream processing and recovery of the cytosolic protein is much easier in the case of buccal expression system. The different steps need to produce the protein are as follows. In the step one, you're going to clone the foreign gene into the transfer vector, right? And then you're going to have the recombinant baculo expression system. So once you clone the protein into a transfer vector, you have the, the gene is going to be transferred onto the, and it's going to be used for production of the recombinant baculo vectors. And then you are going to screen the recombinant baculo expression in the step number three. Then you're going to culture the recombinant insect cell lines. And then in the step five, you're going to do the protein production. Uh, so this is the, um, you know, the vector what we are going to use and this is the region where you are going to, you know, put your protein of interest. So in the step one, you are going to clone the DNA into a transfer vector. It has distinct uh, structural units, so you can have the polyhedron promoter and uh, upstream sequence from the virus genome. Then it can have a cloning site for a foreign DNA and then you can have the polyhedrine termination site and downstream region of the viral genome. The upstream and the downstream sequences from the viral genome helps in homologous recombinations. The foreign DNA is cloned into the cloning site and the recombinant transfer DNA can be propagated. And once you have cloned it into this particular vector, uh, then you can actually go to the next step and where you are going to have the generation of the recombinant DNA. So in that case, what you're going to do is you're going to have this uh, uh, transfer DNA. So you're going to put your protein uh, into the gene into a transfer uh, vector and utilizing the uh, the five prime and as well as the three prime, um, you know, homologous recombinations, this particular cassette is actually going to be put it into the ACPMP DNA and that's how the uh, it is actually going to produce the recombinant vector virus. So this is the portion what is being uh, you know going to replace with the help of from the sequence what is present onto the transfer vector and that's how you're going to have the recombinant vector and this recombinant vector is going to be used for the further infection into the insect cells. Uh, this is the approach number two, okay, so how you can be able to use the different cassettes and you can be able to generate the recombinant baculovirus. Uh, then you can actually be able to do the screening of the recombinant uh, baculovirus. So the recombinant baculovirus can be screened by a plaque assay and what you're going to do is first you're going to do a serial dilution of the virus and uh, serial dilution you can do by multiple method and then once the serial dilution is over then you can actually be able to take the uh, small helicot and then you can check whether it is forming the plaque or not. And uh, by you doing so you can be able to screen the recombinant baculovirus which actually has the gene of your interest and that's how you can be able to use that for the further protein production. Uh, then the uh, how you're going to do the protein production in baculo expression system. So you're going to use the uh, suitable culture media for growth of the insect cells. So maintenance and the culture of insect cell lines. So SF9 cell line is derived from the ovaries of the army veom uh, Spordotera frigatera. It is maintained in the TNF FH uh, insect media containing the 10% FBS and the gentamicin. And the culture media for the protein production, so you can use the baculo gold or other serum free media, which actually contains a low protein media is suitable because it is actually going to, to reduce the amount of contaminating protein. And that's why it is actually going to facilitate the easy purifications. So the whole process would be like this, okay? In the step one, you're going to see 10 to power six uh, SF9 cell in a 60 mm cell culture dish and allow the cells to adhere to the dish, okay? Then in the step two, you're going to add 0.1 ml higher titer baculovirus stock at the MOI of one is to 10. Incubate the cells for three days at 27 degrees Celsius. In the step three, you collect the cells in media, centrifuge at 1000 G for 10 minutes at four degrees Celsius. Now at this stage, 
you can have the two choices either you want to protein put the protein into the cytosolic uh, protein or you can actually be able to put the protein into the secretory pathway so if the protein is secretory you can actually transfer the culture superconductor to new tube and determine the protein concentration with the help of the brad ford if the protein is cytosolic then you can actually discard the superconductor and wash the cell pellet with the pps and lyse the cells and analyze the protein on the sds page which means if the protein is cytosolic you can actually be able to lyse the cells you collect the first cells with the certification and then you can actually lyse the cells and check the expression of the proteins into the sds page if the protein is uh, secretory then you can actually be able to collect the supernatant and that supernatant will have the secretory protein and that also you can be able to check on to the sds page so this is all about the uh, expression system what we have discussed we have discussed about the e coli as an expression system in the previous lecture and in today's lecture we have discussed about the yeast and as well as the insect cell line as an expression system in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the mammalian expression system and then we also going to discuss about how you can be able to detect the expression of the protein with the help of the different analytical technique so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here thank you mm -hmm.